Good morning. Today, I'm going to go correct the classifications of COVID-19 possibility. What is the learning objectives from these presentations? Awareness about important HRCT signs, how to differentiate between different patterns of HRCT, introduction about novel COVID-19 infected pneumonia, in brief, and then we will uh, talk about CORADS uh, subtypes from 1 to 6 according to the, the, the suspicious of diagnosis of COVID-19. Uh, important positive and negative CT signs on novel COVID-19 and at the end we will talk for the summary and the conclusions from this. The first thing, I want to clarify some important HRCT signs related to COVID-19. First sign is a CT halo sign. CT halo sign is representing to that sunshine, uh, which is represented in CT as a focal pulmonary dures or focal consolidations, small consolidations surrounding by a halo of ground glass opacity like this. And this uh, CT halo sign uh, can occur in a lot of differential diagnosis. The first one is invasive aspiration losses. Second is hypervascular hemorrhagic metastasis, Wagner's granulomatosis, Kabusi sarcoma, or invasive mucinous adenocarcinoma. Also, CORAD 6 is diagnosed if there are uh, the CT halo signs uh, accompanied by the other typical findings on the CT for the COVID 19, as we'll discuss later. Now, uh, this uh, example for a case, uh, female patient, 60 years old, with acute myeloid leukemia, and the CT done uh, shows uh, multiple uh, pulmonary nodules with a CT halo sign as the superior segment of the right lower loop and as the upper segment of the uh, left upper loop, and diagnosed as invasive aspergillosis. This is the CT halo. A tall sign. Uh, is the second uh, sign. Uh, it is in, called inverted halo sign. This uh, sign is represented in CT by presence of ground glass opacity nodule surrounded by edge of uh, uh, consolidations as that nodules or as that nodules edge of consolidations. And the cold at all signs are represented to these islands of water surrounded by land in the edge. At all sign uh, or inverted halo signs most likely diagnosis is cryptogenic organizing pneumonia or chronic eosinophilic pneumonia. It sometimes occurs with CORATS 5 classifications, subclassifications of four, as we'll discuss later on. The third signs is crazy bathing signs as that crazy bathing, and uh, it represented by presence of ground glass opacity, superimposed by interlobular septal thickening, as we see here and there. It appears here in both upper loops, and they have a lot of differential diagnosis. The most common infectious differential diagnosis is pneumocystic crania pneumonia, uh, and the neoplastic uh, cause is myosinous bronchoalveolar cell carcinoma. And the most common uh, uh, form for this gravy bathing disease is a pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, and a lot of diagnosis as we uh, see. In the fourth sign is interlobular septal thickening, and interlobular septal thickening, the meaning is thickening of the septa of the secondary pulmonary lipule, and this septa including veins and lymphatic system. If it is thickened, it meaning the pathology in the veins or lymphatics, and the most common differential diagnosis for interlobular septal thickening is the lymphangitis carcinomatosis, parasarcoidosis, uh, pulmonary fibrosis, alveolar proteinosis, and pulmonary. So the main uh, categories of the HRCT abnormalities, uh, uh, it may be appeared as a reticular abnormalities like this uh, interlobular septal thickening in uh, lymphatic carcinoma to the case, and uh, uh, or nodules, uh, this nodules of the Langerhans cell cytosis and uh, uh, may be appeared as cystic like this in the emphysematous uh, centralular emphysema, or appearing as patches like uh, subpleural patches in uh, chronic eosinophilic pneumonia 
in this case. So we have four patterns, the reticular, nodular, cystic, or patches. Now, give me a few seconds to explain uh, some backgrounds for COVID-19. In December uh, 2019, uh, a new type of coronavirus called COVID-19 was extracted from lower respiratory tract samples of several patients in Wuhan, China. These patients presented with symptoms of severe pneumonia including fever, fatigue, dry cough, and respiratory distress. And this is an example for patient CT shows multiple uh, multifocal ground glass opacities in subpleural and basal distribution in this patient of 50 years old Iranian man and confirmed diagnosis of COVID-19 presented with cough and fever and respiratory distress. Novel COVID-19 infected pneumonia is believed uh, to have originated in a wet seafood market in Wuhan, and the mean uh, incubation period is estimated to be 5.2 days, which allows uh, air travelers to spread the disease globally. And this is the main cause of uh, a lot of number, large numbers of uh, infected patients by COVID-19 confirmed due to disease trouble. This patient, an example for COVID-19 infections, confirmed, 70 years old, asymptomatic woman, showing uh, subpleural ground glass obesity with uh, interlocal receptor thickening and bronchial wall thickening also. And this is a typical finding for COVID-19, as we'll discuss in core ads. By the way, to understand the different pattern of the lung pathology, we should know first what is the secondary pulmonary tube. Anatomical and functional units of the pulmonary, and uh, this is uh, about one to two centimeters. In the center, the terminal arterioles appeared, and the terminal bronchioles, which attaches to about five to fifteen. Pulmonary acinase for gas exchange function. Uh, so, any pathology in the terminal arterioles or in the terminal bronchial uh, bronchioles, uh, it appeared in the center of this secondary pulmonary lobe. Uh, it is surrounded by edge of connective tissue. Uh, this septum of connective tissue uh, showing the pulmonary vein and the lymphatic system. And so, any pathology in the septa causing septal wall thickening. Uh, in the lymphatics or uh, veins is considered as the main pathology for that septal thickening. And uh, if we have uh, opacity like this in the pulmonary pure, uh, the pulmonary artery or, term, or the terminal arteries appeared can be seen through the ground glass opacity, through the opacity, uh, compared with the consolidations uh, which uh, uh, obscure the visualizations of the terminal arteries and appeared as opacity without visualizations of the artery. And this is to differentiate between ground glass and consolidation. Now, we'll talk for the main core for these presentations, the core ads. Core ads meaning COVID-19 reporting and the data system. And this is a proposed classification system for radiologists in the Netherlands and still work in progress, but it is published at 25 March 2020. We're talking for CORADS-1. CORADS-1, this is COVID-19, is highly unlikely. We, uh, we see normal CT, or uh, there are non-infectious diseases like congestive heart failure, uh, sarcoidosis, histoplasmosis, malignancy, usual interstitial pneumonia, or if there are fibrotic non-specific interstitial pneumonia, if I change it to prior examination. Consider if any situations from these, we consider it is highly unlikely 
to diagnose of COVID-19 and they take subclassifications for rhizome. And this is an example of normal HRCT for the same patient with different slice thickness and the minimal intensity projections to show the details of the fissure and the secondary pulmonary pules. There are uh, no pathology in the lung and we consider it CORADS1 as uh, uh, and this is another patient showing a centrolubular nodule which is uh, perilymphatic distributions and the peribronchovascular peribronchovascular reaching to the surface of the pleura so we uh, this patient is diagnosed as sarcoidosis and uh, uh, sarcoidosis also considered uh, COVID-19 uh, highly unlikely and they subclassified as CORADS1 this patient 25 presented with granulometer cuveitis to confirm the diagnosis. Now, the second uh, subclassification is CORAD 2. The level of suspicious of COVID 19 infection is low. Uh, typical bronchitis with three in bud and the thick in the bronchus wool. If it is seen in the CT, it considered a low possibility of COVID 19. As this three in bud appearance, and this is a three in bud picture. Three in bud meaning secretions or infections through the terminal uh, bronchioles, leading to this three in bud. And the most common differential diagnosis for this, the TB, uh, come on the top. And then infections, typical infections, uh, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, cystic fibrosis, primary ciliary dyskinesia, or bronchitis. This is an example of 35 years old female patient presented with cough and the x-ray done showing this cavity in the left upper lung zone surrounded by areas of consolidations and linear opacity and uh, sagittal and coronary format imaging confirm the presence of the abscess in the left upper loop small abscesses and also there are three in bud which are appearing clearly here in the axial image three in bud as the terminal uh, uh, as the terminal bronchioles uh, filled with the secretions of infections and the diagnosis was TB and this uh, three in bud makes the classification of CORADS uh, is low suspicious for COVID-19 and they take number two. Let me uh, show you some uh, subtypes of nodular opacity. Uh, the nodular opacity uh, can be appeared as a centrolubular nodules within the center of the secondary pulmonary nodules, as we see before, and away from the pleural surface and the fissure, as we see here also, away from the fissures, away from the pleural surface. So this nodule is considered centrolubular nodules, and this was a case of hypersensitivity pneumonitis or extrinsic allergic alveolitis. Compared with these nodules, which are touches the surface of the pleura and also appeared in the center and distributed in randomly distribution pattern and this was for millary TB. It can, can be also for millary metastasis uh, for the differential diagnosis. However, these nodules are accumulated near the bronchovascular uh, airways and uh, peribronchovascular perilymphatic in distributions and this is which is called uh, the perilymphatic nodules and uh, occur, uh, the most like, uh, common cause for this is lymphangitis carcinomatosis or sarcoidosis as this case of sarcoidosis because it is associated with lymphadenopathy also. So we have uh, four subtypes of four patches or three subtypes of four patches, centrolubular nodules, lymphatic distributions or random distribution. Now, we're going to uh, talking about the CORA3 the COVID-19 is unsure or indeterminate if we uh, classify the uh, CORADS as three degree. The CT abnormalities indicating infection, but unsure whether COVID-19 is involved. Uh, like uh, what is the finding we see in the CT? Uh, central or multifocal consolidation with surrounding ground glass opacities or unifocal ground glass. Widespread bronchopneumonia, lubar pneumonia, septic compli, or this should be considered unsure or indeterminate diagnosis for COVID-19 because there are infections, but we are unsure. We'll classify it as a CORAD3. As in this patient, 37 years old man with COVID-19 pneumonia showing multifocal uh, 
consolidative edges in the uh, admission X-ray showing multifocal consolidations which appear central or than peripheral in both in all segments of the lung or zones and the CT reformats showing the air program and the consolidations. As we mentioned before, consolidations you can't differentiate the pulmonary vessel through the opacity compared with this area of ground glass, which you can only see the pulmonary uh, vessels through the high opacity areas. And also here there are ground glass opacity, and there are area of consolidation, there are pleural thickening and pleural effusion, and this was uh, uh, negative for uh, COVID-19 and uh, categorized as CORADS-3 and because the COVID-19 is unsure or determined, which you confirm it by the laboratory uh, PCR. CORADS-4 the suspicious of COVID-19 is high and the findings are not extremely typical because if it's, if it's extremely typical, we classify it as CORADS-5 and very high. Now, CORADS-4, we diagnose if we find unilateral ground glass area or edge, uh, multifocal consolidation only, finding the suspicious of COVID-19 in underlying pulmonary disease, we consider it high suspicious for COVID-19 and as CORAD-4, as this patient of patchy area of consolidations, and this is different. Another case, which is showing a ground glass opacity areas uh, on background of uh, pulmonary emphysema. Uh, we classify this as CORADS-4, high suspicious for COVID-19. This patient is confirmed by laboratory PCRs as a positive, a positive for COVID-19. Batches opacities uh, subtypes uh, also can be appeared as ground glass opacity, as consolidations, as we mentioned before. This uh, case uh, for Chronic eosinophilic pneumonia, multi multifocal edges consolidations. This is another case for chronic eosinophilic pneumonia, which shows patchy calcium consolidations. And this is for bronchoalveolar cell carcinoma, mass like lesions and consolidation. This one. And this is uh, have lung fibrosis and uh, uh, lymphadenopathy considered as uh, these opacities for circulation. And this is how to differentiate between ground glass opacity, which can differentiate the vessels through the opacity, compared with consolidations, the vessels that cannot be uh, uh, differentiated here. And there are uh, instead of it air bronchogram, which appears clearly due to high opacity, and the consolidations, which appear also in the frontal chest radiogram. Anyway, unfortunately, we have a lot of uh, diseases and differential diagnosis which causes ground glass opacity. As we see here, ground glass opacity in the superior segment of upper loop and the medial aspect of the upper loops and lower loops of the pneumocystic cranial pneumonia. We see here ground glass opacity central in non specific interstitial pneumonia and uh, associated with sarcoidosis and the seeking of interlobular septa and sarcoidosis. Chronic eosinophilic pneumonia, we can see ground glass opacity or consolidations, as we see in this case. Bronchoalveolar cell carcinoma can appear as mass like lesions or consolidations with ground glass opacity. Cytomegalovirus pneumonia, we can see the subtle ground glass opacity. Extrinsic allergic alveolitis, we can see ground glass opacity associated with centrolobular nodules, as we mentioned before, away from the fissures and the pleural surface. And in diffuse alveolar hemorrhage, we can see ground glass opacity, which appeared a fluffy like appearance. And this is the ground glass opacity of cardiogenic pulmonary edema associated with cardiomegaly and second fissures, cur curless line, and sometimes pleural effusion. SARS, we can see the demarcation margin between the ground glass opacity and the normal lung tissue to compare it from the ground glass opacity of the COVID 19s, which have. Uh, unsharped margins between the normal tissue and the ground glass tissue. And this is a MERS patient, Middle East of respiratory distress, showing ground glass obesity and the pleural effusions, which is a little bit uh, rare to occur with COVID 19. And this is a cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, which is showing areas of consolidations and the ground glass obesity patches, subpleural distribution also. 
pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, we can see here on the glass opacity associated with thickened interlobular septa or superimposed by interlobular septal thickening. And this is the comative interstitial pneumonia, which shows ground glass opacity and the centrolobular nodules in smoker, heavy smoker patient. As we see, the ground glass opacity have a lot of differential diagnosis. So it is we can, by another way, you can differentiate ground glass opacity as in patient unwell, as the clinical presentations or will. If the patient unwell in clinical presentations, we consider this list as a differential diagnosis, hemorrhage, edema, acute respiratory distress syndrome, or atypical pneumonia like SARS, MERS, COVID-19, PCR, CMV, syncytial virus pneumonia. If the patient is well at presentation, so it meaning a chronic process of ground glass obesity, and we consider the one from this list in differential diagnosis according to other findings and the patient clinical status as cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, chronic eosinophilic pneumonia, and specific interstitial pneumonia, usual interstitial pneumonia, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, extrinsic allergic alveolitis, or hypersensitivity pneumonitis, mesotrexate, toxicity, and tarpidosis. Now we're going to the uh, other subclassifications of the corets. The club subclassification five is considered the typical finding of the COVID-19 if we see it in the uh, chest uh, CT. And the suspicious is very high for the diagnosis of COVID-19. The first one is multifocal ground glass obesity and consolidations, bilateral multifocal ground glass obesity, uh, which have unsharp demarcation, vascular thickening, subpleural bandes and or basal preference, spider whip, crazy bathing, Reverse it holocyte. All these findings are typical findings for COVID-19 diagnosis and have high susceptibility for diagnosis of the COVID-19. As in this patient of 45 years old man with COVID-19 pneumonia, uh, showing a subtle haziness as a peripheral aspect of subpleural aspect of the uh, frontal chest radiograph. The CT done in the next day in our hospital shows focal areas of consolidations, subtle consolidations as we see in the upper loop, in the lower loop, bilateral, and the areas of consolidation also noted at the basal aspect. The coronary format confirmed the presence of multifocal consolidation and the ground glass opacity, and also volume rendering confirms the diagnosis. After that, we have a laboratory test confirming the presence of the COVID-19 in that patient which he presented, who is presented with low-grade fever and a productive cough. It uh, subclassifies for CORAD5, and uh, COVID-19 is very high suspected before the laboratory test. Another patient in our hospital showing multifocal consolidation in subpleural and the basal distribution associated with subpleural lines and uh, whip uh, uh, in the fourth march, the first row. The second row is 15 March follow-up study uh, showing a stop stable or the same uh, ground glass opacity with multifocal distribution. A little bit uh, decrease the consolidation in the lower loop compared with the presentation film. So the first row, we consider it as CORADS-5 because it's very high susceptibility for diagnosis of COVID-19 after laboratory finding appeared uh, as positive. Uh, the second row is considered CORADS-6 because we, are, we already know patient to have positive laboratory PCR for COVID-19 diagnosis. Another patient, uh, which he classifies as CORADS-5, showing the multifocal subtle ground glass opacity in the uh, lower aspect uh, as, the, as the lower loops, superior segment of the lower loops, and also in the middle loop, as well as in the upper loop, bilateral, subtle, sub uh, lower distribution. Uh, CORADS-5 considered. 
because uh, COVID-19 is very highly suspected after laboratory tests confirmed the asthma. A little bit more cases. Uh, this patient is 29 years old, presented with fever, and uh, the first presentations in 23 January showing a subtle ground glass opacity in subpleural distributions, which are uh, more increasing in the next study three days later. And after two days, uh, uh, ground glass opacity increasing in number and in distributions. Uh, after that, uh, the, there are ground glass uh, opacity confirmed to uh, uh, consolidations and uh, subpleural lines, and uh, also appeared as uh, subpleural lines in the progressive in the next study. Uh, laboratory test confirmed diagnosis of positive results, and it is classified as CORADS 5 because it's very high suspect, suspected to be uh, coronavirus. coronavirus. Uh, another patient of 48 years old, male, the frontal chest radiograph showing the multifocal areas of consolidation and the ground glass, more at the base and the periphery. And the CT confirmed presence of the ground glass obesity, superimposed by interloper receptor thickening and the crazy living appearance in the middle loop and in the lingula. There are also thickening of the fissure here, and also there are uh, consolidations with air bronchograms in the lower loops on both sides. Uh, these pictures is typical for diagnosis of COVID-19 by HRCT, so uh, it considers CORADS-5 very high suspicious. Fortunately, this patient is negative for uh, laboratory PCR, and, uh, and this is confirmed our concept that the uh, CT is not specific for diagnosis of COVID-19 However, it has high sensitivity. Another patient, 62 years old, with negative result also, which is showing the multifocal consolidations, increasing and the progressive course with different uh, subsequent studies, and appearing in the last studies as organizing and uh, also cavitations, formations, consolidation transformations of this ground glass capacity. In the first diagnosis, we diagnose it and classify it as uh, CORADS-5 because the COVID-19 is very high suspected. However, fortunately for this patient also have negative results in two subsequent days, 3 and 11 February. This patient presented uh, with uh, a chest X-ray, which is showing the subtle haziness as the periphery of the film. The CT, when uh, we did see a CT showing multifocal areas of consolidations, which is subtle, and the area of consolidations also appeared at the superior segment of lower loops on both sides, and there are multifocal of ground glass opacity noted in the lungs, and uh, because this multifocality and the ground glass and distributions, we consider it CORADS-5, COVID-19 very high suspected after laboratory finding we it uh, confirmed a positive COVID-19 pneumonia in that patient presented to us with low-grade fevers and the productive cough. I think this is the last uh, patient or last case, 63 year old uh, woman with fever for 11 days. The first examination showing the multifocal areas of consolidations in subpleural distribution and the basal distributions in middle loop and the lingula also. There are areas of ground glass in the next study up here, and the areas of uh, consolidation and the ground glass opacity is not improved in the uh, next study uh, after two weeks. Uh, however, uh, in the start, we diagnose it as CORADS-5, uh, very high suspected for COVID-19. However, it has uh, uh, two uh, negative results also for, uh, in the laboratory RT-PCR say. And uh, this is confirm our concept about CT for diagnosis of COVID-19. CORAD-6, if the patient is known for PCR and they have typical finding with halocyte, like this patient will have halocyte and inverted halocyte here in the superior segment of the left lower loop, uh, this uh, classified as CORAD-6.
and this is another patient with multiple halocyne, uh, CT halocyne nodules in the middle loop and lingula as well as the superior segment of the right upper loop, right lower loop, as we see here also, multiple uh, uh, halocynes with confirmed diagnosis of uh, COVID-19, they classified as CORAD-6. Another patient, a known case of uh, uh, a known case of COVID-19 in the bilaboratory and uh, multifocal areas of consolidations, subpleural distributions. Uh, also, this is uh, classified as ME is my present. The typical CT finding for COVID-19 diagnosis is multifocal ground glass and consolidations, bilateral in distribution, unsharped demarcations, vascular thickening, subpleural ends, spider webs, crazy bathing, and reverse. The key positive CT findings is ground glass opacity 100%, involved multiple loops 100%, uh, uh, in subpleural peripheral distribution 100%, in that uh, study done for uh, more than 1,000 patients. Consolidations occur in 75%, 77.8%, uh, septal thickening 55.6%, bronchial dilatation and wool thickening 55.6%. And in the same study, uh, the important negative CT findings uh, showing no pleural effusion, lymphadenopathy, lung nodules, or specific zonal predominance. The chest CT has a high sensitivity for diagnosis of COVID-19. As we see, chest CT may be considered as a primary tool for the current COVID-19 detections in epidemic areas. The imaging features of COVID-19 pneumonia are highly nonspecific. Indeed, I don't think HRCT can confirm the diagnosis of COVID-19 due to its nonspecificity. As we mentioned before, it can occur in more than 17 differential diagnoses. However, however, I can definitely say HRCT has high sensitivity to classify the level of suspicious COVID-19 infections, as we mentioned in details before, and classify them from no to very high classification from one to six, as we mentioned. I hope I clarified a lot of confusion about COVID-19 HRCT. My reference.